Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. A few years ago, I read a great introduction to probability titled Understanding Probability by Professor Hank Times. This was not for school or for work. I just read probability textbooks in my spare time for fun. So anyway, I was absolutely surprised and thrilled when I got an email from Hank Times who said he was a fan of Mind Your Decisions. Furthermore, he suggested a couple of problems from his new book, Probability, A Lively Introduction. People always email me asking how to learn about probability. So here are two books I can recommend. Do check them out. The puzzle in this video is adapted from Probability, A Lively Introduction. Your birthday cake has N burning candles and you need to blow out all the candles before anyone can eat cake. Each time you try to blow out the candles, the number of candles that remain burning is a random event. If the cake starts with K burning candles, then after your attempt to blow them out, it will end up with a whole number of burning candles between zero and K minus one, and each possibility occurs with equal chance. In other words, each time you will blow out at least one candle, and for k larger than one, you will blow out a random number of candles between one and k. What is the expected number of times you must blow out the candles until all of the n candles are blown out and everyone can eat cake? Can you figure this problem out? Give it a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for a solution. So one way to solve this problem is by considering smaller values and setting up a recursive equation. Let's write ek to be the expected number when there are k burning candles on the cake. If the cake has zero burning candles, then we're done. e0 equals zero. For a cake with one burning candle, we are sure to blow it out in one attempt. e1 equals one. What about a cake with two burning candles? What is E2? So after one attempt, we have a couple of possibilities. With probability one half, we blow out both candles so we are done, E0 equals zero. But with probability one half, one candle still burns, and we expect E1, which equals one, more attempts to blow out all of the candles. We can combine these into a simple equation. E2 equals one plus one half times the quantity E0 plus E1. We can substitute in the values for E0 and E1, and we get E2 is equal to three halves. Now I tried working out E3 and E4 and several more values but I wasn't able to see any particular pattern. But when you're stuck, don't give up. I thought about how to solve this recurrence equation and I eventually found a tip. Sometimes you can solve these by subtracting consecutive terms. So that ended up working out for me and I will explain that strategy next. So I generalized this recurrence equation. What if a cake has K plus one burning candles? We will use one attempt for sure, and then we will be left with k plus one equally likely outcomes. The number of candles still burning will be a number from zero to k associated with additional expected attempts of e0, e1, e2, all the way to ek, respectively, depending on the number of candles still burning. We can write this in one equation. e of k plus one equals one for the one attempt, plus it will be the average of these k plus one possible outcomes. So we have one over k plus one times e0 plus e1 plus all the way going to ek. Now we'll multiply both sides of the equation by k plus one. So we have k plus one times e of k plus one, and that will be equal to k plus one plus the sum going from E0 to EK. 
Now to get consecutive terms, we'll consider the previous term. We'll decrease each index by one to consider a cake with k candles. So on the left-hand side, this will be k times e, k. Then we consider this k plus one term, that'll become k. Then we consider the sum from zero to k, that'll become the sum from zero to k minus one. So this is the equation for a birthday cake with k candles. So I'll write this equation out, and now we'll consider these two equations. Notice there are a lot of similar terms in these equations. So we can simplify this by subtracting the second equation from the first. We can cancel many of these terms. On the right-hand side, the k's will cancel, e0 will cancel, e1 will cancel, all the way going up to e of k minus one. When we do the subtraction, we have k plus one times e of k plus one minus k times e k, and that equals one plus e k. Now we simplify this equation, and then we solve for the difference of the two terms, and we get the difference e k plus one minus e k is equal to one over the quantity k plus one. Now I understood what this meant. Here's the pattern. To get to the next term in the sequence, we add the fraction one over the next term. So to get to the term k plus one, we add one over k plus one. In other words, this is the harmonic series. And I could then write out the explicit form for the pattern going up to n. E of n equals one plus one half plus one third plus one fourth all the way to one over n. As an interesting tidbit, since the sum of the harmonic series diverges, the expected value grows indefinitely. E n goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. Did you figure it out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions. If you like this video, you can check out my books, which are listed in the video description, and you can support me on Patreon. If you have a math topic or a puzzle, you can email me, presh at mindyourdecisions.com, and you can catch me on social media, either at Mind Your Decisions or at Presh Tallwalker.